So I'm standing in front of one of our two lynx enclosures here at Wildwood. We have four Eurasian lynx, and I'm standing in front of Kara and Shreya's enclosure. So Kara and Shreya are our senior kittizens, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, they're actually quite old for lynx. They're coming up on their 17th birthday. I believe they'll be 17 in early May this year. And that's really old. Um, their life expectancy in captivity is about 20 years, so they're definitely our pensioners. We also have two other lynx that are just under a year old. Their names are Toradin and Flossie, and they're a brother and sister pair that we recently acquired last October. Um, but I'm in front of Kara and Shreya's enclosure in the hopes that they'll hear my voice and they'll come out whilst we're filming. So, what are lynx? Uh, lynx are really just large wild cats. Um, they're not big cats, so just as a backup, Big cats are in the panthera family, so they're your tigers and lions, jaguars, panthers, and so on. Um, these ones, our lynx, are more closely related to your house cat than they are to a tiger or a lion. That being said, they're not small, so if you do get a chance to see a lynx uh, in the background whilst I'm talking, or of course throughout this video, you'll notice that they're pretty large animals. If I were lucky enough to have one sat beside me, it would probably standing up, come up to my knee at least. Um, there are four species of lynx in the world. Uh, we have the Eurasian lynx here at Wildwood, which is a native species, but it is currently extinct in Great Britain. Thankfully, Eurasian lynx still exist across uh, Europe and Asia, primarily in the forests of Eastern Europe and Russia, where they have enough woodland to survive. There are also the Iberian lynx. That one is found in the mountains in Spain. Um, the Canadian lynx and the bobcat are both smaller species, especially the bobcat is about the size of a large house cat, and they're both found across Canada and a little bit into the United States as well. Lynx have a lot of really cool adaptations. So an adaptation is a behavior or a feature of an animal's body that helps it to survive in its natural environment. And lynx are an excellent example of being adapted to live in a part of the world that gets really cold and snowy in the winter time. So although they're native to Britain, this is probably one of the mildest climates that historically they've lived in. So they're living in Eastern Europe, Russia, Siberia, Canada, places that are really, really cold and snowy all winter long, and they don't hibernate. They're awake all winter long hunting for food, so they have to survive in the snow. First of all, you'll notice that they all have short tails, and that's not a fluke. Um, they've all evolved to have a shorter tail than normal, and their short tail, or bobbed tail, ends in a little black fur. They have extra fur on the tips of their ears. They have long, tufted points. And that's because, as you'll know, when you're outside on a cold day without a hat on, you'll start to get really, really cold. And your extremities, the tips of your ears, are the first things to freeze off. Not only is that painful, and it could lead to infection, but it certainly doesn't help with your ability to hear from really far away, which is one of the things that lynx need to do in order to stay safe, but also to be able to find their food. So the fur on the tips of their ears, scientists believe, partly evolved due to the fact that it helps to keep their ears warm and their blood circulating um, and prevent frostbite happening. For the same reason, they have a shortened tail. Another reason they have tufted pointed ears is because it's believed that it helps them to hear better bit like an aerial or a satellite dish, but also because it helps with their communication. Lynx, being cats, are generally communicating through body language and smell rather than through noise. I know you think your house cat is really noisy, but scientists believe that the reason cats meow at us is because they think, honestly, we're just a little bit dumb and we haven't figured out their body language yet. As humans, we vocalize a lot, and it's been proven that cats that grow up around humans uh, are going to be more vocal than feral cats that don't grow up around humans. So our lynx will sometimes meow to me because they know sometimes I feed them, but in the wild, they wouldn't be meowing to each other at all. Instead, they'd be positioning their ears, so forward if they're in a good mood, and back and flat if they're quite cross. And finally, you might notice that their feet are disproportionately large. They have really, really, really big paws for the size of their bodies. 
and that's because their paws act as snowshoes. So they have partially webbed feet and they have lots of fur growing in between their toes, a bit like wearing little winter boots. So when they're outside in the winter time, they can actually run on top of the snow almost as quickly as they can in the summertime. And that's because their toes spread out and spread out the weight of their bodies across a larger surface area. And that's one of the reasons their paws are so large. So lynx are woodland animals. You would normally find them in a woodland much like this one, and that's because that's where they find their prey. Now they are large cats, so I'm willing to bet those of you at home are guessing that they might like to eat rodents, and you wouldn't be wrong, but actually they can catch really, really large prey. So they're carnivores, so they'll be catching anything from rats and rabbits all the way up to wild boar and believe it or not, even deer. Yeah, that's right, a lynx can catch a deer. That's an animal that's four times its own size. And they can also jump really high, so they certainly can and have caught birds. Uh, and I say have as in they've caught birds in here, certainly do in the wild. Um, so depending on which statistics you look up, they can jump up to about eight feet high, which conveniently is about as high as this fence behind me, and they can jump about 14 feet across. If you think about your house cat at home, having a really good springy set of muscles in its back legs, able to leap at that laser pointer or that feather toy that you've got, well then just multiply that to an animal that is about 30 or 40 kilos and you've got a lynx. Now lynx are solitary creatures. So in the wild, after they've left their mum, when they're all grown up, they'll be living on their own and they will be catching all of this prey all by themselves. So bear in mind, these are some of the same animals that wolves catch, but wolves catch their food together in packs. Lynx will be doing it all by themselves. They use a totally different hunting strategy to wolves. They are ambush predators. So they will use the element of surprise to sneak up on their prey and pounce. But better yet, they don't even have to sneak up on their prey. They can wait for their dinner to come along. Unlike your house cats, lynx are confident climbers. So they're rather at home high up in a tree and you'll notice we've built their enclosure with lots of high up platforms, not only so they can survey their kingdom, but so they can feel comfortable and secure. And they're very happy not only to climb up to those platforms or hop up to those platforms, but jump down from them. So in the wild, a lynx might be hanging out in a tree waiting for dinner literally to walk along. And then when food comes along, it drops down and it pounces. Lynx can run really, really fast. They can run at their top speed, about 70 kilometers an hour. That's about 42, 45 miles an hour. But as I like to say, they're not marathon runners, they're sprinters. So they're using that little burst of speed just to make sure they can actually catch their prey. So they're not going to be chasing after their food for a really long time. Instead, they're going to be sneaking up, pouncing, and then hopefully managing to catch dinner. They kill their prey by biting their really big, sharp canine teeth, sinking them in. And then when they're eating meat, just like your house cats and actually your dogs at home, you'll probably notice our lynx tilt their head to the side. If a lynx were kind enough to let you look into its mouth, you'd see that its teeth are a little bit different to ours. So first of all, in the front, we've got incisors. They're your cheese, your smile teeth, your bite into an apple teeth. Well, lynx aren't really biting into any apples. So their incisors are teeny tiny, only a couple of millimeters high. And they use those primarily for grooming themselves, a bit like a fine tooth comb. But then the teeth that look like fangs, their canine teeth are really large. They're about two or three centimeters high and they have a groove down the side, each of their canine teeth. That groove, this is going to get gory, is a bit of a blood gutter. It lets the extra blood squirt out even faster so their bite can be that much more efficient. And all cats have it, so if you do have a friendly cat at home, I encourage you to take a look at its teeth and you might see a little bit of a groove in its canine teeth as well. So canine teeth are a little bit like the forks in a carnivore's mouth. They're used to pierce meat. And then finally, where we have our molars, our flat grinding teeth, good at eating plant matter, lynx don't eat plants, they only eat meat. So instead of molars, they have what are known as carnassial teeth. So carnassial teeth look exactly like the edge of a steak knife. They are sharp, jagged teeth with lots of zigzags and they're quite, uh, they're quite effective 
at slicing through meat. They're self-sharpening, so as a lynx chews, its top jaw and bottom jaw carnassial teeth are rubbing up against each other, um, and that's a way that they keep their teeth nice and sharp. And also, if you think about how a pair of scissors can cut through paper, that's shearing force, that's what their teeth do, but with meat. So if you ever wonder why your pets will tilt their head to the side when they're eating, it's because they're actually just angling their meat cutting teeth, their carnassial teeth towards their dinner. So when we feed our lynx, we'll be giving them about a kilogram of meat per day. It varies because in the wild, you're not going to get the same thing every day anyway, and some days you're luckier than others. But we'll be giving them, for example, a half a rabbit or a really big fat rat or a chicken maybe. And when they eat, they will be pulling off the fur and the feathers, depending on what it is, and then tilting their heads to the side to bite through their food. In the wild, remember, they're hunting really big things. Ideally, they're actually putting in the effort to catch a deer. Because if you've gone through the effort to catch a deer, well then, you've effectively stockpiled, right? You've got enough food for a fair few days. So they'll be doing the same kind of behavior. They'll be tilting their head to the sides to eat, but then they'll also be saving their meal for later. Obviously, lynx don't have a fridge. So what they'll do instead is they'll be dragging their meat up into a tree with them to keep it safe from other predators. Or if they don't have that option, they might be digging what's known as a cache. So a cache is a hole in the ground where the lynx will be burying the meat and saving it ideally for later. And that way they don't have to put in the effort to hunt every single day. Now, I mentioned earlier that lynx unfortunately are extinct in this country and that's due to habitat loss. So they, they like to live in woodlands such as this one where they can find uh, their prey animals quite easily. And that's also due to the fact that people unfortunately are scared of them and they had hunted them to extinction. But we don't have any more large predators living in Britain today. We don't have lynx, we don't have wolves, and we don't have bears anymore. After those predators, what's left effectively are foxes and badgers. And foxes and badgers don't hunt wild boar or deer. So what happens when you have an island, an ecosystem with no more large predators, but you still have large herbivores? Well, if you're a deer, at least for a while, life is really good. There's nobody hunting you there's no predators, and there's lots of food, there's lots of plants around. So deer and wild boar numbers are slowly on the rise. Now, that's not an issue for the time being, but deer will continue to multiply to the point where they're eating the plants faster than the plants have a chance to grow back. And eventually, if we take this to an extreme, what ends up happening is you have too many deer for the environment to sustain them and they're going to start changing what our woodlands look like. So you get to a population control issue. So there's two ways to go about this. We could hunt the deer ourselves and certainly deer and wild boar um, have been hunted in the past or alternatively you could do it the natural way and you could reintroduce a carnivore. And we think at Wildwood that lynx are the best candidate for a reintroduction. And that's for a few reasons. First of all, you've never heard of the big bad lynx, have you? Lynx don't have that cultural association of being scary or evil the way wolves unfortunately do. Um, second of all, in the parts of the world where lynx still live near people, they are uh, really scared of people. As I like to tell the kids in the audience, we're kind of stinky. Okay, so we're unpredictable, we're loud, we're smelly, and to a wild animal, we pose a threat we're quite dangerous and unpredictable so they want to stay as far away from us as possible so in parts of eastern europe and russia where lynx are known to be living near human settlements they don't go anywhere near people but also the third reason that i mentioned they don't go near the animals that we keep as livestock so a lynx because it can catch a deer could quite easily catch a sheep if it wanted to but because they're scared of people and they want to stay as far away from us as possible, they don't go after the animals that we keep as well. So that means that lynx can quite peacefully coexist with people in an area that's got enough woodland for them to hide in. Um, so eventually we'd love to see lynx being reintroduced to Britain as a way to naturally control the growing population of deer and wild boar. 
There's a fantastic charity called Lynx UK Trust that I encourage you to look up um, that is essentially campaigning for this very thing. But in the meantime, we've got our wonderful lynx at Wildwood that serve as ambassadors for a species that you'd be really lucky to see in the wild today. Thank you.